The first three weeks of the college football season, not too shabby for the old Big 12. The Big 12 goes 21-5 in non-conference play so far. That's an 81% clip, best in the nation. Also, the Big 12 is only giving up 18 points per game in non-conference play. Who says we don't play defense? I'm Aaron Pryor. This is Big 12 Big Football. We're going to wrap up non-conference play this week and jump into conference play just a little bit. Iowa State will look to rebound against Louisiana Monroe. TCU will come home after a blowout win over Purdue and host Metroplex rival SMU at 2.30 on FS1. West Virginia and Kansas get together for the first conference matchup of the year. We'll get into West Virginia's Sam James and the dynamic duo in the KU backfield in just a moment. Baylor has high aspirations this year. They're 2-0 coming off a bye week and will travel to Rice. And the big one to close out the day, Texas and Oklahoma State take center stage Saturday night on ABC. But we start in Lawrence where the Jayhawks come home after a successful business trip to Boston College to face a West Virginia team that also took down an ACC foe last weekend. And one of the big headlines coming out of the Mountaineers win over NC State was the introduction of wide receiver and Big 12 newcomer of the week, Sam James. Through West Virginia's first two games, the redshirt freshman had a modest 11 catches for 67 yards, typical freshman numbers trying to get their feet under him. Then, a little underneath route with some excellent blocking, and James did the rest to get into the end zone and introduce himself to college football. I got to visit with Mountaineer junior wide receiver TJ Simmons in the offseason, and I asked him, who's somebody you can see bursting onto the scene this year? His answer, Sam James. He knows that he has to be, he has to be a guy this year. So he's actually, he, he's pushed himself harder than ever. Um, like I said, focusing on the little things, making sure he's in the best shape, knowing the playbook and everything. Out of, out of everybody, I probably, I probably pick on him the most. So he's like, he's like my little brother. So like, I feel like uh, that's why we're, like, we're, we're really, we're really click, clicked up together tight. Got a great relationship with him. Changing your entire offense between weeks two and three may seem asinine to some. But Kansas steamrolled Boston College with 567 yards of total offense, ending a Power 5 road losing streak the Jayhawks never want to see repeated again. Kansas refused to let their Week 2 loss derail their season, going up to Boston and unleashing a barrage of offense, the highest offensive output for Kansas since 2016. KU's two-headed monster in the backfield accounted for 308 rushing yards in that game. Khalil Herbert is currently eighth in the nation in total rushing yards, and that's just on 36 carries. Add that to the speed and quickness of Puka Williams, and you've got a real task to try to slow these two down. Oh, they're quick. They're really quick. Um, they're north-south runners, and what I mean by that is they can put one, they can put a, a foot in the ground, a stick, and get vertical. Um, they catch the ball out of the backfield. I just think they're really good players. You know, I, I think that, and as we go through our league, I think we'll be hard pressed to find a better duo. You know, they, they're really talented. A couple of other quick notes headed into this one. West Virginia is going to get Tevin Bush back this weekend after serving a one-week suspension. Also, the Mountaineers are currently tied for first in the Big 12 with nine total sacks. Should be a good one. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is where you can find this one, 3.30 p.m. Central Time. I want to take a little time here and talk about the green and gold out of Waco. Baylor will wrap up non-conference play this weekend against Rice and look to move to 3-0 headed into conference play. And sure, the Bears' opponents to this point have not been much of a challenge, but keep in mind where this program was just two years ago. 1-11 with losses to all three non-conference opponents. That season had to happen for BU to get where they are now. Now they have a bowl win under their belt and high aspirations to compete for the conference title this year. Baylor has a solid quarterback in Charlie Brewer and a rushing attack that currently ranks fourth in the entire country. Matt Rule has got things moving in the right direction, but how close are the Bears to being in the conference title race at the end of the season? You know, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that you know we have a lot of work to do to even put ourselves in that um, conversation, but I think that, that has to be our goal. You know, we have to say to ourselves that we want to be a team that's relevant in the conference championship race coming down the stretch. and. Um, you know, even when I, you know, have had teams that have won championships, nothing's ever handed to you. You know, the, the ball bounces funny ways. You have to go out and just compete for 60 minutes. And, and um, but I do like our team's mentality, and I think that they have a championship mentality, and they want to get there. There's a lot of things that have to happen, but I think we have the right approach. Got to love that green jacket. Bears and Owls get going. 6 p.m. CBS Sports Net.
To the sellout in Austin as Oklahoma State comes to town, looking to extend the five-game winning streak, the Pokes holding games against Texas in Austin. Spencer Sanders, Chuba Hubbard, and Tylen Wallace are lighting up the stat sheet through three games. Wallace leads the country in receiving yards per game, Chuba Hubbard leads the nation in rushing yards per game, and Sanders, as a freshman quarterback, is in the top 30 in the NCAA in total offense. Tylen busted onto the scene in 2018. A Bolitnikoff Award finalist, Wallace had nearly 1,500 yards and 15 touchdowns, and the production thus far hasn't slowed down. Tylen is an extremely hardworking young man. Uh, he's very humble. Uh, he's, he's tough. He's disciplined. He's physical. Uh, he's easy to coach. You, you tell him something one time, he's going to go do it. He's never going to look back, never tries to get out of anything. That's where he's made great strides. He's always had ability. His route running has improved. Uh, we have the best wideout coach in the country in Casey Dunn, and they've worked together in the spring. And there's no question he'll even improve on last year. Texas bounced back last week and cruised to a 48-13 win over Rice. The Horns had a 31-0 lead headed into halftime. Texas, of course, has their share of talented receivers, including Devin Duvernay, who leads the league in receptions per game and is second behind Wallace in receiving yards per game. Diving into the numbers a little bit here, Texas is second in the league and 10th in the country in passing offense and has put up at least 45 points in each of the Longhorns' first three games. To me, this game has high-scoring shootout written all over it. Oklahoma State and Texas are both in the bottom of the Big 12 in passing yards allowed per game and total yards allowed per game. So last one to have the ball, probably going to win this game, but who knows, always a great game, 6.30 p.m. on ABC. Now, let's cap things off with the top five plays from last week, courtesy of Stadium. First down on Kansas, first possession here in the second half. We give to her wide open to midfield, making another man miss, still on his feet at the 40-yard line, 30, 25, 20, Knocked out of bounds inside the 15. Another huge run by Khalil Herbert. Take the pitch to Nwongu. Purdy over the middle. He's got a man wide right open. Tariq Milton. He's got speed. Milton is going to go all the way. 73 yards. And the Cyclones have struck again. E. McCoy comes into the game. Blitz was on. Picked up beautifully. Chance to make something happen. Another swing out. Deshante Jones throws it. He's got a man wide open. LaMarco Pepway. Touchdown. Iowa State. 51 yards. He's out injured in this game. And they were exposed here as LaMichael Petway. Came back to the Heights. First coaching career. Herbert trying to make something happen here and does a big run for the Kansas back 50 40 stiff arm still on his feet has a blocker in front of him 15 10 5 dives to the pylon and they're going to rule him out of bounds at the three yard line what a turn of events thanks for watching everyone enjoy your weekend and we'll see you next week for another episode of Big 12 Big Football